Hey guys, I just wanted to share with you some of my beginner tips and tricks that are very useful if you're just starting out playing in Disney Dreamlight Valley. Alright guys, so we're going to start off with uh, the first tip that I have. So you can actually use the map to find your valley character. So let's say if I'm looking for Stitch, which is my favorite character, you just hover over him and you click on him. And then it shows you a nice little pathway that will lead you straight to that valley character that you're looking for. And I just love this because sometimes it can be a little hard to exactly know um, where they at. Like right now, like I wouldn't have seen Stitch behind the house. I would have not known that, you know. So just use that um, wisely to get to your uh, valley character. All right, guys. So the second tip that I'll have for you is your bread and butter, your money. So the way that you go about in this game about getting money is going to be gardening. All right. So for instance, in the beginning trials, you'll get Goofy Stall, which you then would have to level up three times. Um, once you've done that, um, the best tip is to start off by planting carrots. From carrots, then you'll go ahead and get canolas. Then from canolas, you would then graduate on to getting the pumpkins. Okay, so your pumpkins are going to be your bread and butter in this game. However, when you first start off, you're going to be wanting to use the, the carrots. So for instance, right, if I was to just buy two carrots, right? Whoa give you guys a great example for your return on your money so i believe it's like you buy them for like uh that 20 that i showed you and let's say i go back and i sell so i just had picked up three and i'll go back and i'll sell it to goofy Good to see you. right we'll just sell two because we gave him so that's 88 so that's a big return on your investment right um, so what I like to do essentially is just make a big gardening spot and um, go ahead and harvest and garden away. All right, so then another great way to make money is going to be by making meals and then selling them off to Goofy. All right, guys, another great way to make money in the game is going to be by cooking and selling them off to either your restaurant characters who's in the restaurant or whatever or selling them off to goofy now i've seen a great amount of people that actually cook souffles and they would go ahead and sell it to goofy so we'll go ahead and test it out right now right so the recipe for a souffle i think i already have it but i think it's like eggs milk there we go eggs milk cheese and butter so you go ahead add it to your cart go ahead and cook it up and boom so now let's see what kind of return on investment that is because those ingredients are like pretty expensive like just the milk alone is like 230 coins um but i've seen a lot of people say that it's a good return on your investment now i don't necessarily do a lot of cooking um for my money making but just in case if you guys prefer cooking versus gardening this is a great way to do it so, boom, you do a souffle. We'll just do one so we can see how much we'll get. It's a thousand. So, if you think about it, that's pre that's pretty good return on your investment as well. I'm actually going to sell the both of them. That's a pretty good return on your investment. All right, guys. So, tip number three is that when you are gardening, fishing, digging, harvesting, whatever the case may be, you always want to bring a buddy to just maximize on your investment when it comes to selling this stuff to goofy right so i always bring a mining uh, or gardening buddy with me at all times and they drop their little extras and i just run over them and pick them up right another great tip that i have been seeing people do as well is that oh molly get out of the way molly i would see them put their buddy right in a fence lock them up so you will just lock them up in a fence so that way they don't get in the way. And so you can continue to garden without having to um, stop every few minutes to pick it up. Now, I love this. Oh, what the hell? Now, I do love this trick because what I like to do, and I'll try to show it in like a picture, is that I normally take like a paper clip or something to hold on my E button. And like it holds my E button down, which is like my gardening button. 
so that way I don't have to like stay at my computer while gardening because you guys see how big my gar garden is um so it takes a minute and I just don't want to sometimes sit here so I'll like put it on leave maybe make some coffee maybe uh, make a quick little snack or whatever the case may be and i'll sit here and i'll do this and guys so anytime you see this too you want to keep spamming to maximize the amount of uh, harvest that you get or whatever you planted to maximize that two hours later all right guys so i just got done har uh, harvesting my whole garden area so what you would do basically is get rid of the fence. Let's see, boom, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's canola galore, canola galore, canola galore. So this is just what I love to do. Also, it's really, really satisfying when Remy does it cause he has a really great job of keeping it in one area as soon as you unlock him from that gate just makes it nice and simple all right guys so another tip when it does come to gardening that you want to um pay attention to is that with these arrows like that the green arrows or whatever this is indicating that these crops grow exceptionally well in this area which means that it just it's a little bit quicker to grow them right so a great way to like know exactly which one it is without having to pick up is if you look at goofy stall right so lettuce um carrots and wheat grow uh good in peaceful metal right but if we travel over to sunlit plateau it's going to be the peppers cotton i think that's a zucchini these beans or whatever they're going to grow exceptionally well in sunlit plateau so they'll just grow bigger in sunlit, I'm sorry, they'll grow faster in sunlit plateau. All right guys, so tip number five, right? I say collect everything, harvest everything, collect all the wood, stone, mine, all of that. Do not let that like, don't forget to do that. Only because the simple fact of like, when you are crafting and certain quests, they do require a lot example there is a certain quest i'm not going to throw any spoilers out there is a certain request that requires 300 hardwood right like 100 iron ingots like 100 fibers like all of that requires a lot of material right i also want to show you like another tip within a tip i'm just giving you guys the tea today so what i like to do if i am like like y'all, I don't feel like going to each freaking biome and collecting, you know what I'm saying? Like a lazy harvesting way is like, I like to just collect, like breeze through the biome and then just collect and put it to like my house area or say like wherever I'm at, right? So I'll just go, especially when it comes to the wood, like I'll pick up the wood, just drag it over, whatever the case may be. Now it's solely up to you if you feel like, this is more work than just going to the biome. But sometimes I just get lazy, you know, sometimes. And I'll just do this and I'll look for like spots and I'll put the wood over there. Um, you know, I'll do, you know, whatever I can just to make it a little bit easier for me when it comes to collecting material. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, just I just try to do that. Um, but also just just guys, just remember to just collect everything and see i just have it at my spot and i'll go and i'll pick him right <laughs> up and i'll do this for a while so just keep that in mind like materials are needed they are very essential for your progress throughout the game and so i'll sit and i'll do it right here all right guys so remember how i said collecting everything is very essential so for instance let's see right here in sunlit plateau for me i haven't unlocked that area because it's blocked by a bunch of bones right so you can always use my first tip when it comes to just gathering some of those items and transferring them over right or or right hear me out now you just take your teleport right you place it in that area and then boom, you can teleport to that area. All right guys, so take this 
tip with a grain of salt only because there's a possibility that that whole thing may get nerfed right so what i like to do i'll sometimes just come pick up what i need to pick up harvest whatever gather whatever i want to gather and as soon as i'm done or i feel content with what i've done i literally i put it back the same time because i just don't want to like be screwed over and now i'm stuck in an area or my teleport is stuck in that area until i unlock that part of the quest or un actually unlock that area right all right guys so let's get into the next tip tip number seven is mining right so i have my mining buddy with me right here which is Kristoff. and guys don't sleep on mining it is actually very very important to mine as a lot of the crafting items that you're going to come across is going to require iron ingots which then requires a lot of iron ore right so what I like to do when it comes to mining is like I like to start off in Glade of Trust, right? So one of your um, one of the big places to get as much iron ore as possible is going to go Glade of Tr uh, it's going to go Glade of Trust, Forest of Valor, Sunlit Plateau, Frosted Heights, and Forgotten Lands. Another thing is when you're also um, mining, guys don't sleep on these rocks like i said collect everything so make sure you're mining everything as a lot of things do require stone as well so i would normally just do that routine i'll start off in glade of trust and go on to the next biome after that and after that all right guys so my next tip which is going to be tip number eight is going to be storage right so you're going to be going in this game and you're going to be collecting a lot a lot of items so it's best to stay organized as possible um so i crafted about this much uh storage about eight chests and each one um shows me what's inside with the table that's behind right so i know in this chest i'm gonna have my pebbles clay stone gold and this one it's gonna be more like wood uh, the grass and stuff like that. So I try to keep it as organized as possible and it just helps me also when I'm crafting because I keep them next to my crafting station. So just keep that in mind guys. Try to stay as organized as possible. So another thing too when it comes to your food items, right? I like to actually keep my food items in my kitchen. My kitchen back here right so i have this chest where all my food items are all of this where you know what i'm saying like all my food items are and everything and don't forget guys there is something called cloud storage so as you can see i don't really have too much food on me at all however if i come and i start cooking all of my ingredients are available to me. Now, this same rule does apply to when you are crafting, okay? So, it just helps you with not having to keep so much crafting items or cooking items on you on hand. All right, guys. So, we're going to jump right into cooking, which is going to be our tip number eight. So, cooking is very important as you need it for energy in order to do your task, right? So, if you pay attention right now, I have blue straight blue right for my energy right so let's make something like a basic fruit salad right if you pay attention i'm just gonna put one fruit so one apple and i'm gonna cook so don't really pay attention too much to the star rating of it because if you look right i ate one um i cooked with one apple and where is that right we'll eat it and you see that's how much boost it gives me, right? But if I go back and I do the same recipe, however, just add more fruit to it. So I'll do an apple, blueberry, raspberry, whatever, right? I added three fruits to this, even though it is still a one star rating. If I go back and I eat that fruit salad, it's tremendously greater than just that one time so just keep that in mind too when you are cooking yes food star ratings are amazing to go after but something as simple as the fruit salad and just putting extra fruit in that said fruit salad will give you a bigger 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 boost 
And speaking of that said boost, right? The yellow is just basically a super speed. So you're able to do certain tasks quicker. It gives you energy longer. So anytime that you're about to harvest garden, just try your best to get your boost all the way up to the top just to be a little bit more sufficient. All right, guys. So we're on to tip number 10. Now, essentially, you guys, this is a tip that I don't see a lot of people talking about. I'm not sure if it's just that it's not known, but everybody knows Remy's Realm, right? Within Remy's Realm, he has all of the ingredients that you would need without actually having to purchase them, right? So instead of using your own money or your hard working ingredients that you gather up, I would just go into Remy's Realm and just free ball, right? And what I mean by that is that as you know, some of the items are like specifically to Remy's Realm. So the ingredients you can't leave out with, right? You're just stuck with having them in that realm. However, a great way to like try to finesse some food, five-star meals, or figuring out different cooking utensils, uh, cooking items, um, is coming into Remy's Realm and being as creative as possible, right? So I'm just gonna stock up on some items real quick so we can make a meal or two. All right guys, so a great thing is that I gathered up all the ingredients. I'm probably gonna end up just making another souffle considering that it's just something that's easy to do, right? So I gathered up those ingredients, gonna auto fill it and start cooking. So if you ever feel like you're out of ingredients or you don't wanna use your ingredients in order to make Remy's food, you can do that. So we're going to make a few dishes here. All right, guys. So I made some few dishes, right? So I made the souffle and I made the bell pepper pups, right? So what I like to do is I'm going to eat a souffle. I'll eat another souffle, right? Boom. I'm all energized up and ready to go. Once you leave his realm, though, watch, watch this, guys. Watch this. Once you leave the realm, all that stuff is gone, including the meals. But my energy level stayed the same because when I was in the realm, I ate it in the realm. So if you ever just want to be creative in the cooking area, try to get some ingredients for free and boost up your energy for free without using your own materials, this is a great, great way, great way to do it without having to do too much. OK. All right, guys. Tip number 11. It's gonna be leveling friendships, right? Everybody knows by now what the tips I've already provided that you will use a buddy for everything that you do, whether it's gardening, fishing, mining, whatever the case may be, right? However, there are some characters where you cannot assign them a specific role. Like for instance, this Ariel and Ursula, right? So what I like to do in order to level up their friendship and unlock certain quests is I'll go to them, right? I'll do a daily discussion, right? I'll always do a daily discussion to start it off with them. And it does boost up their, our friendship level. Once I've done a daily discussion, I will go ahead and jump into giving them. So they do have their favorite things of the day. If I feel like it, I will go ahead and I'll make their favorite thing of the day. So let's do Ariel's. Her favorite thing of the day is fabric. I know I do have fabric to give. So, all right guys, so I went and got my fabric from my storage. I'm so we'll happy come here, I have something to give you, and I'll gift her that fabric. And boom, friendship boost, right? Now let's say if you don't have the items of the day or you're trying to be resourceful, um, what I like to do also, I can spam them with flowers. It's not as big of a boost if you did their, you know, gifts of the day, but it is something, right? So that's what I would like to do just to do a friendship level on some of the characters that I can't even assign a role for. All right, guys. So another great tip that I like to use is our tip number 12. Tip number 12 is going to be collecting as much dream light as possible, right? So in order to figure out how to collect dream light, you would go over into your menus tab. And you'll look at your dream light duty. So you get certain dream light for unlocking certain quests. So this is what I'll do. I'll go in here and I'll figure out, hmm, what can I use to, you know, get 500 dream lights today? Whatever the case may be. So I've already done some, which is mining. 
mine some i brought two gifts now some of these things are going to be as you play you're unlocking dream light right so just try to keep that um and keep that in mind also dream light is very very important guys because dream light is used to unlock certain biomes unlock certain characters and more all right guys so tip number 13 is going to be your collection tab now don't sleep on this tab guys right so if you're ever wondering what something may sell for without having to go to it, you can go into your crafting items and figure that out, right? Same thing for your fish. You can see how much it sells for, but also where you can fish for it, right? Which biome it's located in. It's something like that in, for each section. So foraging, hardwood would be in Forest of Valor, right? Iron ore, Forest of Valor, Blade of Trust, Night Shard, everywhere. So use your collection tab to your best, best advantage. So that way you're not frustrated. Like, how do I get sand? What do I need to do? Where can I find this? If you go on your collection tab and just um, look for it, you can find it. The only thing I would say about this collection tab, because it is a whole lot of item, guys. I wish they had a search menu to where you can just type it in and boom, it's there, right? Um, same thing with the characters too. You can figure out what character has what um, hangout bonus. So Wally is my gardener, Stitch is my digger, Maui is my fisher, Moana is my fisher. So you can figure that out and also figure out what their favorite things of the day are. All right, guys, tip number 14. Good. Tip number 14 is going to be about fishing, right? So I'm going to get my handy dandy fishing buddy, which is Maui, right? So if you come over, you see that there's a white circle right here. So fishing is essential if you need to get seaweed, which seaweed requires fiber for you to craft certain things. So white circles can mean seaweed, uh, regular fish like a herring fish or whatever the case may be. All right? Oh, let me get my let me get my little thing. So there is a white circle. There is a blue circle, which is what I'm fishing for. And then there's also a gold circle. So in the blue circle, you'll find more um, exotic fishes, I guess you can say, or shrimp, right? Shrimp is needed for like seafood platters or whatever, right? So gold ones, you'll find your more expensive fish that you can actually sell for a little bit more money or use it to make certain exclusive um, items. I know in the gold one, I think is where you can get a uh, lobster as well, or you'll get your um, catfish, which sells for a good amount. I think it sells for like... Yeah, it's 550 for one catfish, right? So use those circles to your advantage, but also don't like overthink it. You don't necessarily need to, there we go. You don't need to be in a circle in order to catch um, like seaweed and stuff like that or bottom feeder fishes like a bass, right? It's just better if you were to be in one of those circles, you just have a likely of getting like a better item or better fish. All right, guys, so we have now tip number 15, which is covering up these holes without having to individually dig them out, right? So a great way to um, like combat against that is going to be to go into your building mode, just grabbing a set of furniture sp spots and boom, doing something like that, doing something like that doing something like that, doing, you know what I'm saying? And it will cover up the holes up. Now you do have to leave the furniture there, exit out and then boom. So let's say, let's say if I didn't do that, right? The holes will stay there. So you have to plant, plant that furniture down or else like you would have to do it again. So an example, right? I'll just plant or dig, sorry, dig up these four holes real quick. I'll go back into my builder mode. We'll just get like a chair. Let's say I did the boom, 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 but I didn't leave the chair there and I just exit out. The holes will come right back. So it's essential. It's very important that you just at least let it have the furniture there place, get out of your building mode, pick up the furniture again. All right. All right, guys. So we're on to tip number 16 which is all gonna be about our little companions, right? So my one right now is the fox. I got it during the star path for Christmas. But you see this little turtle, this cute little turtle. I think I, oh, you see? 
So with companions, each one is a little bit different on how to catch, but like the sea turtle, right? I just crept up on it a little bit. It got into its little shell because it was a little scared, right? But it poked its head back out and I was able to interact with it. I know with sea turtles, their favorite item is um, seaweed. So you can do that. I know each item is different or each, I'm sorry, each pet is different. So like the rabbits, I think they like um, carrots. The squirrels, I think they like nuts and stuff like that. And if you continuously feed the same color that you fed before, I don't think I actually fed him before, and you continue to feed him over and over his favorite um, thing, which is seaweed, then you'll be able to unlock him as a companion. But just keep that in um, mind. All right, guys. So another great tip is going to be using your star path, okay? This is where you can get, like, extra rewards, extra... Um, furniture all that good stuff and unfortunately right now this star path has ended because an update is on the way um but it's normally about 30 or something days i believe but you get your um your your currency for the star bath by completing the duties that's going to be with inside of the event right then you can redeem them and get little either moonstones you can get the furniture all that good stuff. I was slacking doing this um, star path and I actually regret it so bad because I'm realizing like when Christmas comes back around, I would love to have this sleigh. And it's also not guaranteed that some of the items that you'll see right now is going to be out again or in Scrooge's store or next year. You know what I'm saying? Like this Christmas tree. Y'all, I fumbled the bag on this Christmas tree, right? This light... Just learn from my mistakes, y'all, and complete the star path if you can. All right, guys. So another great tip is going to be our tip 18. As you can see, I am in Scrooge's store. So Scrooge actually does um, update his store every day. You may get some new items. And decorating is lit in this game, right? So I try to come in here and just basically like buy up whatever i possibly can and i already then sold all my canola so i have the money i have the bread to do so so i'll come in here and i'll just buy whatever necessarily i want you know money is no, op no money is no option for me you know we got that bread we definitely got that bread i kind of like this dress hello 30,000, hell no. Anyways, so use Scrooge's store and buy up all the little items that you like, all the cute little stuff. It's gonna be coming clutch when it comes to decorating different areas for you. All right, guys, so tip number 19, guys. Tip number 19 is if you haven't noticed it by now, right? Y'all, y'all can move anything anywhere the only thing that you really cannot move is going to be like um pawns you can't move pawns anywhere right but like i stated use that to your advantage so if you are in a lazy mood when it comes to like gathering materials girl if y'all don't just move that thing closer to y'all i'm gonna move this thing all the way over to me so that way i don't have to go all the way over even though i would just teleport to that biome or whatever it's just an easier way to move everything and this is also where your decorating skills come into play now y'all don't mind my little plaza we are in under construction i'm figuring some things out and i'm still trying to figure out what i'm going to do on this side of the meadow but great great tip is you can literally move everything if i'm lazy and i don't want him to I have to walk all these steps just to pick up this sand. This is what we about to do. Move it close to me and, and pick it up, period. So great, great tip, guys. Use that to your advantage and save you a whole lot of time when you're gathering your materials, decorating, or doing whatever you need to do. All right, guys. So this is my last and final tip. Tip number 20 is do not, do not, do not time skip okay this is not like animal crossings to where you can uh, time skip and have little to no repercussions for it time skipping in dreamlight valley is a no-no as some players who have time skipped have had accounts locked 
They were restricted by certain quests and experienced some more glitches than anything. Now, use if you are not patient, if you're not patient like that and you want to time skip and everything like that, use it at your own discretion. As like I said, I've known people who played this game who have time skipped and either lost everything that they worked for or now they can't do certain quests and they're just end up losing time than gaining time. So just keep that in mind. I just recommend to just wait it out until that time comes. Don't risk all of your hard work just to skip a few days, okay? All right, and that ends it out with all the tips and tricks that I have for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the video. I do stream this game quite often, as it does take up most of my time. So feel free to join my streams, as my schedule can definitely be found in my community posts. Thanks again, guys. You have a wonderful day, and enjoy your journey on Dreamlight Valley. Mm -hmm.